Your name, sir? Paul. So, uh, can you tell me something really about the cop show? Uh, to my understanding, it was a fluke. It was when the writers went on strike and uh, they were trying to come up with something and they came up with this, the cops. So, are you a fan of cops? Yes, watch it regularly. Why do you like the show so much? Uh, because it's interesting, it's true to life, and that's pretty much it. Are you, are you in law enforcement? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay, thank you for your time. Miss, last question. Are, are you with the, the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce? Uh huh. How does someone get a star? It's a nomination process. Who, who does it? Anyone can nominate someone with permission of a celebrity. And what, what about that Tina Marie? About her. Will she get a star? They have to wait five years. There's a posthumous uh, period of, of mourning. We won't accept it for five years. Five years, huh? Okay, and your name? My name's Anna Martinez. I, I've been watching you for years, but Johnny, I, I just want to say I love you and uh, keep up the good Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. Reality show, Pioneer, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of his uh, guests are with us. Uh, we've got a few special ones who'll be with us, you'll hear from. And, you know, as an audience, you get to cheer. And you already, I can see you've got a pretty good crowd here. You're pretty good at cheering. So we don't usually do these in the afternoon. So you get a special treat here doing one that's kind of special. Uh, the ceremony today is in front of Musso and Frank's. For those of you who don't know, this is the most historic restaurant in Hollywood. It is the last of the original Hollywood hangouts of the stars. Uh, this is uh, where a lot of the uh, great writers like Hemingway used to hang out in the days when they were here writing scripts uh, for the studios. Uh, so it's a great place, a lot of history here. Uh, they're famous uh, for their martinis and uh, a lot of history that breathes there. So if you get a chance after the ceremony or another occasion, come back to Musso and Frank's. And we'll be back in about 10 minutes with our ceremony. Thank you.
afternoon's Walk of Fame ceremony. The ceremony is presented by the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce and the Hollywood Historic Trust. And we are delighted to honor one of Hollywood's pioneers of reality television, as he is honored today with a 2,432nd star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Today we honor John Langley. Now, we do, before we bring our honoree to the stage, let me tell you a few facts about his life, uh, things that you may not know. Uh, John Langley was born in Oklahoma, but he moved with his parents at a very young age to the west side of Los Angeles, where he, when he was still, actually, when he was still a baby. In fact, his original home was torn down to make the way for the 405 freeway. So we can all thank him for that. <laughs> now John worked the intelligence unit of the United States Army from 1961 to 1963, and he, re he received a Bachelor of Arts degree in English from Cal State Dominguez Hills. That was in 1971. And later a Master's degree in Literature and Composition. He stayed in the Los Angeles area and was studying for his doctorate in philosophy at UC Irvine when he made the transition into film. So, he went from intelligence to philosophy to reality. All right, quite a transition. A director, writer, and producer of television and film, John is best known as the creator and executive producer of the long-running, critically acclaimed Fox series, Cox. Now get this, currently in its 23rd season with more than 900 episodes aired, the success of Cox has certified his place in television history, breaking records for primetime network television, making it one of the longest running series in TV history. And if that doesn't deserve applause, I don't know what does. John has received numerous recognitions for Cox, including the American Television Award, four Emmy nominations, and a People's Choice Award nomination. A true pioneer of the reality television phenomenon, John has established himself as one of the premier visionaries in the entertainment world and has since moved on to various projects for both television and film. He and his son Morgan also produced the successful nonfiction series Jail, Street Patrol, Vegas Strip, and Las Vegas Jailhouse. In 1990, that deserves some applause, absolutely. In 1995, Langley Films was established to create and produce independent theatrical motion pictures. Since then, John has produced and directed various films including Dog Watch, Tiptoes, and Wild Side. He recently made the successful transition to feature films. In 2010, John's company produced two major theatrical films, Brooklyn's Finest, starring Richard Gere, and Leaves of Grass. Other features developed at can be applauded, absolutely. Some of the other features developed and produced by Langley Films include Reality Check, Vampire Clan, Search and Destroy, Gunfighters Moon, and Deadly Sins. Now John is also involved in numerous charitable organizations, both as an active supporter and a donor. He's also a trustee on the board of the International Documentary Association Helping Young Filmmakers. And, in addition to his work as a producer, John has two major hobbies and interests that have been very successful. As a, as a race car impresario on the off-road circuit, and he's also a successful wine, has a successful wine label, Yuraca, which is a world-class Argentine wine. So, we could go on and on, but I think you've heard enough. Let's bring to the stage now our honoree, John Langley. get to hear from John yet, he has to stand here and wave to the press and to the crowd. Because we have several people who are dying to talk about our honoree. Our first speaker is a radio personality currently on the air in Los Angeles at K-Earth 101 FM. With more than 30 years in broadcasting, his career includes major market morning show duties, serving as host and producer of several syndicated po programs, and ventures online and on television. Please welcome John's good friend, Gary Bryan. Oh. 
All right, uh, first question. Who here has ever been arrested? Come on, raise your hands. Come on. John would like to thank you very much. He's made millions of dollars off of people like us. Well, I have a few notes here about stupid things that people do, but uh, hang on. Sorry, I lent this coat to Charlie Sheen. Okay. You know, John has made more money off of Law and Order than just about anybody except for maybe Dick Wolf. It's hard to believe now, but there wasn't always a show called Cops. Prior to 1989, we had to look to what we now call scripted TV to give us a behind the scenes look at law enforcement. Now, if you're under 30, you're asking, what is scripted TV? <laughs> you can look it up in the online dictionary. The keywords are too damned expensive. But all through the years, TV has shown the realistic, gritty side of law enforcement. Now, in the early days, we had Broderick Crawford as Chief Dan Matthews in Highway Patrol. Remember that one? That's where we learned what 10-4 meant. Then came the King, Jack Webb as Sergeant Joe Friday in Dragnet. Now, Jack Webb had a long career in television because he learned how to stretch 30 minutes of acting over an entire television season. Then in the 70s, things got slightly cooler with Adam-12, but of course, Starsky and Hutch, very realistic. And in the 80s, the show T.J. Hooker finally revealed two big secrets that the cops had been keeping from us. Number one, all female officers look just like Heather Locklear. And number two, cops spend weeks at the police academy learning the correct way to slide across the hood of a car. We also learned from TV there are all kinds of cops. In Hawaii Five-O, we had the island cops. In Mod Squad, we had the hip young cops. In Miami Vice, we were blown away by the pastel-wearing Maserati driving cops. A lot of guys and gals signed up for police work after that one, but how many ever got to drive the Maserati? And how about Magnum P.I.? Tom Selleck had a pretty good cop mustache, you know the, the one I'm talking about, and he drove a Ferrari, so what's not to like? And by the way, we found out that Magnum P.I. in Latin means I have to go to the bathroom very, very badly. <laughs> It'll be over soon, John. Yeah, all these shows were very realistic, but then a guy named John Langley had the idea of having real cops in action. You know, for years we'd seen TV reporters doing a ride-along, but was there enough action between the donuts to justify an entire TV show? Well, talk about timing. When the TV writers went on strike, John was in, and a new era of reality television was born. So thanks a lot, John. Without you, the father of reality TV, the Kardashian sisters would be waiting tables at IHOP. And Snooki would be a speed bump on the Jersey Turnpike. But John Langley and his son Morgan Langley are providing a real public service. You know, in their own way, they preserved the history of late 20th century law enforcement on the street level. Years from now, these cop shows are probably going to be historical documents. They really will. Historians will be asking questions like, did anyone actually own a shirt in the 20th century? And how does being a redneck factor into your behavior when you're stopped for a traffic violation? And in the new millennium, we've discovered that human DNA is 97% the same as a chimpanzee. But COPS shows that some people are much closer to 100%. So COPS may even someday answer the burning question, why are those neatly trimmed mustaches essential to effective law enforcement? But most importantly, Cop shows that Mark Twain was correct when he said, it's no wonder that truth is stranger than fiction, because fiction has to make sense. And as my dad used to say, you can't make this stuff up. <laughs> by the way, John also gets credit for having one of the coolest theme songs on TV, Bad Boys, by the Jamaican group Inner Circle. What a great theme song, right? <laughs> I actually met these guys one time, and within 30 seconds I had a contact high, so. Someday we're going to see him on Cops as Perpetrators. Anyway, it's a great day for John, Maggie, Morgan, the entire family. And just as a fan and admirer, John, I'm proud to be here and be a part of your big day. Congratulations. Thank you, Gary. Let me acknowledge a few people who are with us. We have the chairman of the board of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, Sam Smith. And we're also delighted to have a couple of our past honorees with us. 
So please acknowledge uh, Lauren Schuler Donner and Richard Donner over here. And their star is very close by, so you can visit both of them anytime. They're in front of the Egyptian Theater. Okay, our next speaker is president of 20th Television, a leader in the U.S. program production and distribution arena. 20th Television provides a wide array of first-run network and off-network programming, as well as feature film packages to the syndication and cable marketplaces. Please welcome Gary Meidel. I met Greg Meidel. You know, how do all these people get in my room? So anyway, everybody, Gary stole half my material, so I want to go easy here. And I don't want to step on Paul's lines either, so uh, Paul Rodriguez bringing up the rear. We've all talked about John and how great he is, but let me tell you, he truly is the godfather of reality television. And working at Fox, I can definitely say that with a, a smile on my face. The show premiered on March 11th of 1989. What's important about that is March 11th is Rupert Murdoch's birthday. So that's very, very important. The most amazing thing, since Cops has premiered, 2,254 reality shows have been launched. Prior to Cops' premiere, premiere, it was less than 10. That's a startling statistic. And the other great thing, since it all began for us at Fox, We've had over 800 episodes produced. It's one of the longest running and the most episodes produced of any television series on network television. And still, after 23 years, is the number one show on Fox on Saturday nights with adults 18 to 49 and 18 to 34, which all of you in the audience fit into that room. So, thank you. And there are two guys out here with Paul Franklin and uh, Steve McDonald. We sell the show in syndication to and to cable. And you're going to be seeing it for the rest of your lives, I can promise you. The most amazing thing about Cops is that it repeats better than most of the situation comedies you see on television. Matter of fact, it is the only reality show that has demonstrated its ability to run year after year, episode after episode, and still win the time period. More importantly, even the repeat episode on Fox on Saturday nights at 8.30 outperforms the original telecast at 8 o'clock and is number one in its time period. So, congratulations to John. And you think we just do this right here in America? Believe me, I've been out with John in the streets of, with cops, and I've been in the back of that cop car chasing down a drug dealer, a smuggler, you know, drunken driver, whatever, all the above, like right here on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, but we've been in 140 cities in the United States, which is pretty incredible where we shot. But interestingly enough, we've been in various foreign countries around the, the world. We shot in Hong Kong, we shot in London, we shot in Russia, we shot down in South America, Latin America. I went with them to do a, a, a shoot on location in Hong Kong, and Maggie was there. It was quite an experience. And you think that here in the United States that we all carry guns, we carry MK-47s. In Hong Kong, they use silk plastic or silk bags to put over the convict's heads when they arrest them. No guns, no weapons. It's very boring. Probably wouldn't get any ratings if we did it originally in Hong Kong. So thank you, John, for that. But in the end, and I've known John a long time since the very beginning of this, he is a truly renaissance man. So I think it's always important that we talk about the other side of John in addition to John, who was from Cops, the creator, the executive producer. He loves his family, most importantly, and they're all here today. Maggie, his wife, and I'm probably stealing somebody's thunder, but what the hell, he stole mine. So Maggie's here, Morgan, who now runs the production company, with Morgan and his wife, Kristen. Zach, who my golf and buddy, and his wife, Jen. And Jen is the mother of their grandbaby, Sophie, so I think that's very important. And Sarah and her husband, Morgan, are here. And what's hard to believe, they all got married, I think, within a year. All three of their kids were married, and two out of the three were married in Mexico. So I don't know why that happened, but it was a hell of a time, and the tequila is a lot better in Mexico than it is in the United States. So that's one part about being a Renaissance man. The other thing is that he truly does like fine wine. Now, several of us, including Paul and Steve, have been out for lunch meetings, and Bruce Bauer, our CFO, has had to approve some of these uh, lunch outings and, and uh, 
meal tickets would have been quite expensive. But to give you an idea, we drink 82 Lafitte's at lunch. So in honor of you know, John, I really want to thank him for all the French Bordeaux's over the year. Other part about being a Renaissance man is loving beautiful locations, both here in the United States and abroad. If it isn't on the, in the south of France, it's down in Manhattan Beach or Ojai. So I like all of that. And like they said earlier, he is, a, is passionate about great literature. Which I always found impressive that a professor in English could become the creator and the executive producer of COPS only in America. <laughs> and we never talked about that he is actually more fluent in Spanish than he is English. He is incredible. <laughs> when John was in the military, he was down in, uh, I believe it was in Panama, where he just spoke the local language and truly if you've been out about in a bilingual society like our own there's no better place to be late at night than with John Langley. I call him the El Jefe of reality programming. And let me tell you John from all of your friends at Fox and 20th Television we love you. Thank you for everything. You've been a dear friend to my wife Nancy and me for thick and thin and we never will ever ever forget it and we love you. Once you're part of a friend of John's you're part of his family for life. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Revered as one of the first Latin kings of comedy, our next speaker has been making audiences laugh all over the world in Spanish and English for nearly three decades. His unique brand of humor is a perfect blend of his Latin heritage and the American dream. As an actor and comedian, his multifaceted career includes starring roles and featured appearances in over 45 films and countless television series and comedy specials. Please welcome Paul Rodriguez to the stage. Thank you. Like most of you, I too am saying, who's John Langley? Let me tell you who John Langley is. Let me tell you who he's not. He's got he money, we know he's successful, but why does he go around impersonating Kenny Rogers? <laughs> the man is a debonair. He is the whitest man I know. As a matter of fact, I saw him naked. He's transparent. <laughs> this man and, and his Caucasian kids, I've got to know, sitting next to the Donner Party. <laughs> Some of you will get these jokes, those of you who have the History Channel. <laughs> Hi, how are you? John has fans all over the world. He also has enemies all over the world. You have to credit John, for hearing bad boys, bad boys, what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. We have some representatives of the Rastafari group here. What's up, man? They're gonna get you, John. He's a generous man. I've spent many nights in walking these streets begging him for a job. Uh, this, like, like the other speakers, I too am here because I got paid. But that, that has, should have nothing to do with the fact that I have sincere emotions towards this man. He's like the father I never had. <laughs> Except I'm older than him. <laughs> He's a Caucasian man of a good heart on behalf of all the Hispanics and, and African Americans and well just basically anybody who's ever been arrested on cops. <laughs> I'd like to thank you, John, for taking our misery and turning it into a nice house in Manhattan. <laughs> John was able to I got to know Grandma, Grandma Langley. I'm quoting Grandma Langley, so watch my language. Grandma Langley said, Well done, John. <laughs> oh, you're shit and tall cotton, boy. That's Caucasian boy. You're doing really good. I want to also say that in the years that I have known John and borrowed money from him, he has never bounced a check off of me. All of his employees will tell you he's a good man to work for. Not the best, not the best. They wanted actually Barber to run the company, but the, the Barber Langley thing, you know, that's, a, that's split up. He is a guy who's been able to uh, become a good father, right? So far, the kids haven't written any books. <laughs> They're coming. <laughs> They're working on it. But I've known him as a good friend. I mean, he's the only guy I know that has a plane. That's bad, eh? <laughs> he's got a lowrider plane. John discovered me. I was breaking into his home in, uh, in Puerto Vallarta at the time. And he said, you doesn't have to do that, Mr. Rodriguez. Come with me. I'll make you a citizen. You know? <laughs> See, look at the man behind his <laughs> You know, sir, I feel just like you do back there. It's, you look the same way I look when I look at Jeopardy. What the hell is going on here? This is the only star 
A celebration that I've known where there's more cops than people. What's happening over there? How you doing? All kidding aside, but not really. John is a, is a good guy. I, I recommend him as a, as a friend. And he's, a, he's been a, a, a good friend over the years. And, damn, you know, I miss you, man. I have, uh, I became uh, friends uh, with John through a, through a, a, a sexual relationship. <laughs> No, no, it's not with, not with him. Oh, you people are dirty. You're my crowd. Like, this crowd looks like the same crowd. You guys look like Night Court. Nice to have you here. John has a new show coming out, made in the mean streets of Beverly Hills. What a job. I was thinking about this, John. What a job. You know, him and Maggie could decide anywhere in the world they want to go, and they just go there to film cops and write it off on their taxes. That's, uh, that's sweet. But uh, he's been able to be a, a generous, a philanthropist, and, a, and an economist, and a feminist, and, a, <laughs> and I don't know all the other is, but I'm sure glad uh, to know you, and uh, I'm, I'm so uh, uh, happy that, that you finally got a star right here next to you. Uh, they dug up Fatty Arbuckle for you, man. <laughs> I, I don't want to get emotional, but the smell of urine is really getting to me, and uh, it's the way I, you know, I feel. I should have stopped a long time ago, but <laughs> suffice it to say, you're a good guy, and many more blessings to you and your family. Well, our other speaker said they were glad they didn't have to follow Paul. So let me introduce the man who does have to follow Paul. Please welcome the councilman for the 4th District of the City of Los Angeles, a great guy representing Hollywood, Tom LeBond. Hey, let's give Paul Rodriguez a big hand right there. John, congratulations to you. It's so wonderful that you're here. You pick one of the greatest spots right here at Musso Frank, the oldest restaurant in Hollywood. It shows where your heart is. And I really want to thank you for this afternoon because it's a joy to be here. I want to also let you know personal regards from Kent McCord, who played Officer Jim Reed. He had uh, business to do, but he wanted to be remembered to you. And Thank you for your show. Also, I'd like to ask right now that uh, Sergeant Lamont Jarrett, SLO Washington, SLO Dillard, Officer Horn, and Estes join me here. This is the representatives from the Chiefs of Police Office, Charlie Beck, because they joined me today in this commendation to salute you. On the Walk of Fame, signed by Mayor Miragosa and Eric Garcetti. I'll let you know, time is down in a lot of reasons in this country. Excuse me, John. I'll get arrested for that. Because of the hard work of police officers throughout the country and effective relationships with community-based organizations. But your show is a part of that. Because people get aware of the hard work of what police officers do, the great work of what they do. So we want to salute you on behalf of the city of Los Angeles with this commendation and this great loaf of bread made by the nuns underneath the Hollywood sign. And John, you're an angel in the city of angels. Time to hear from our honoree. Please welcome John Langley. Uh, after all that, I'm uh, almost speechless. Not, uh, not entirely. Uh, first off, I'd like to say I wish you know I had a little more uh, forethought. I would have been up at the Donner or some town a little bit. But, uh, I actually like this spot a lot. This is a historic location for me, and I'm really pleased to be here. I'm really thrilled that all of you have come out. Uh, there are a couple of things I'd like to say real fast. I, I think I, uh, everything's been said. They stole all of my material, too. So, uh, and Paul made me sweat a lot, so I'm glad to get through this as quickly as possible in terms of me, because I'm a behind-the-camera guy, not an in-front-of-the-camera guy. Uh, as far as the star is concerned, I'd like to say this first, that it should be John Langley uh, 
Maggie Langley's first husband because uh, she's done a tremendous job in getting me here and keeping me out of my own shows. And uh, on that note, there are a lot of other people I should thank real quickly. Uh, Hollywood uh, Chamber of Commerce among them, but uh, I'd like to thank guys like Doug Waterman who have been with me forever. He's the guy that's propped me up over the years and sustained me and been with me the majority of my career and again made me look good over the years. Uh, there are many people, and I can't name them all, they know who they are, but I can name a few of them. There's Karen Hoy, there's Arlene Bronstein, there's uh, Susan Carney, who I've had a love-hate relationship with about 20 years, and I didn't understand it until I looked up Ancestor.com and discovered I had a great-great-grandmother named Susan Carney. So it all made sense then. Uh, but there, she's a part of the family, as are Doug and Arlene and Karen, and I mean, there's too many for me to mention at this point, but uh, I would like to mention my family, my sons, Morgan and Zach, and my daughter, Sarah. Uh, she makes me so clint. <laughs> but uh, they've uh, inspired me over the years because I had to feed them and educate them <laughs> and take care of them and hope they wouldn't end up on my show. Uh, Morgan came close a few times with a couple of friends I had, but uh, it all worked out for the best. Uh, I guess the last thing I'd like to say is this. Uh, you know, some people often ask me, and I have to tell this story, it's real brief, but they ask me, uh, how'd you end up on, uh, with a, you know, a star on Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame? And I said, well, let me tell you a story. Uh, there was a couple of kids I hired years and years ago, back in 1985 or so, and uh, they, they were hired as PAs. They worked in a local store. They came out with me. And this is the reason I ended up here, and it's the, it's the reason uh, a lot of things happen in life. But uh, they came out and they worked. I was working on some uh, exercise video. Uh, and it had a lot of aerobics girls out dancing. So these kids had to clean up the beach, which included picking up dog droppings because it didn't look good for them to be tap dancing on dog droppings. So I watched them and we came to a cut in the program. And one of them walked over to me and he said, uh, Hey John, could you give me some advice? And I said, sure kid. And I was being a little flippant and I saw how serious he was. He said, uh, just tell me, how can I make it in this business? How do you make it in this business? I said, you really want to know? And I decided to be serious. I said, okay. You want to write? Write. You want to produce? Produce. You want to direct? Direct. And he looked at me and he said, that's it? That's your advice? And I said, that's it kid. So he walked away and he continued his job picking up dog droppings. And at the end of the day, he walked up and he said, I quit. And I said, you know something, congratulations, kid. And he and the other guy were Roger Avery and Quentin Tarantino. So they went, <laughs> well, Roger's here today. They went on and uh, won the Academy Awards, and both of them had directing careers and writing careers and so forth. So I guess the moral of this story is, if you want to make it and get your own star in Hollywood, don't get stuck in Venice Beach picking up dog crap. <laughs> Thank you all. I'm honored by your presence. Well, it's time to unveil the star, but let me first announce that in memory of our late Johnny Grant, we hereby declare this John Langley Day in Hollywood.
Hey, John, we sign. John, we sign. What's this? John, big fan of yours. I'm a big, uh, videographer. Uh -huh. Because of you. Thank you, Paul. This is my husband, Paul Kane. Hi, how you doing, Paul? Very nice to meet you. He's with the FAA. Oh, I love John, it. Thank you, John. Of you. I'm a videographer, man. Cool, I love it. The style you guys use when you follow the criminals, I use the same style. One, one question. Sure. Uh, what, what's your advice for, for Lindsay Lohan? For Lindsay? Yes. <laughs> Please. Stay out of trouble. Yeah. Uh, I mean, get some help. But, uh, <laughs> you're amazing, man. When I knew you were getting a star. Uh huh. I had to be here, man. Oh, I appreciate oh, so that, thank man. You, man. I really appreciate that. You got the good that. work, dude. Oh, thank you. Thank I really you, appreciate I, I that. I stole your style, man. That's okay. It, hey, I stole it from somebody else. You can't, oh. <laughs> you can't have a tripod. You got to move with the action. You got to, you got to handhold. And, you're uh, absolutely right. Even a bit, Makes make, it more real. I make money because of you now. Thank good, you. Good, good. So, I'm glad to hear that, yeah. man. That means more to me than well, you know, nine out of ten oh, things oh, I hear. I want to take Mike Tyson. He beat me up at the airport when I was shooting. Oh damn, that's not right. Well, it all worked out at the end. Yeah. Yeah. But but I got good footage of it. I got him coming out. There you go. You got the shot. So thank you. Oh, my God. Hi. 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 The movie you did, it's on the table now. The cop movie. Oh, uh, Brooklyn's give? Finest. I saw yeah. it two times, man. I love it, man. Oh, did you like it? Yeah, it was Antoine Fuqua. He did a good job on that. But I was shocked that you were involved with it, man. I was like, why are you doing movies now? You know? You know, I do them every now and then. I don't do them that often. It's, uh, I like, I, I do reality. You want the, the action? Yeah. I, I like real life. You're, you're amazing. It's amazing. Uh, no. He is amazing. Hi. Hi, how you doing? I love your show. I watch it all the time. Oh, um, nice. um, you thank think? you. Nice meeting you, Paul. Oh, nice meet you. May, I, may I have your autograph? Oh, of course. I don't know what you wanted, but I'll be happy to give it to you. <laughs> because I like watching that show. It's a really good show. It's always good. And, and I your say, speech I say this. was very inspiring. I, I study theater, and, and it's very true. you got to chase what you want to do. It's, totally, it's all about focus. <laughs> it's the easiest thing in the world. People just don't get it. you got to focus. Oh, I'm Heather. It was very nice Heather, to meet you. Heather, very nice meeting you. That's it. My name's Paul. Paul. My wife, Marie. We traveled from Riverside to come over here to Great see you. Show. Oh, you're kidding. That was very sweet of you guys. Great show. Oh, thank you very much. Watch it every Saturday that. night. Watch the reruns during the week. And, uh, Give me your side of Sure. Damn. And you guys, and you guys shoot everything. You shoot door knobs. You shoot. You focus on different things. It's amazing. Oh yeah. We try to do it all. You know how it yeah, is. Yeah. Great. Got to keep shooting, right? The more you shoot, the better off you are. You just hose it down. You don't need a tripod. You gotta move. I mean, you know what happens? It just makes it more active and brings it to life. It's amazing. You know I mean? all, all my videos are good because of you. Because uh, thank you. I bet they're good because of you. No, you make them good. Your style. <laughs> I appreciate that. Man. Yeah, just uh, somewhere I can send this. We appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank you very much.
I thought about you. You with the Chamber uh, Chamber Conference? I am. Okay, listen. Uh, how do you get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? What's well, the some, somebody has to uh, nominate you. There's an application. You can go to the Hollywood Chamber website, which is hollywoodchamber.net, and download the application. They have to have permission from the person being nominated and a commitment that they would attend the ceremony if they were selected. And then they have to also uh, uh, have someone to be able to pay the fee should they be selected. And uh, that's about it. Okay, I'm from uh, Venice Beach and uh, they're trying to get Tina Maria a star. Uh -huh. So uh, have you heard anything about that? Have not. So I heard, I heard when they die, it takes, it takes five years or something like that? If it's posthumous, we won't consider it for five years. And we do very few uh, posthumous. We do a few, because occasionally, you know, there's people who deserve it, but they generally don't generate a lot of publicity. Have you heard about Tina Marie? Heard about her? Yeah. Uh, little, not a lot. She's, she's a very famous singer, and all, and all her parents want to star, so they're, they're doing the process now. And I guess they, take about, they think it's going to happen this year, but it's not going to happen this year, right? Well, the application deadline is May 31st to get the application in. But she died in December. Then you could get the application in, but it's not going to happen for five years. So okay. they have to wait for five and, years. And your name, sir? LaRon Gooper. And you took Johnny, Johnny Grant's place, right? Johnny Grant's irreplaceable. Nobody could take Johnny's well, you're, place. You're smooth, dude. I, 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 he trained you. <laughs> Johnny Grant trained you. I'm, uh, I'm doing the MC duties, yes. You do a great job, by the way. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. This is going to her fans, by the way. Okay. Hey, thank oh, you. Great. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. And me? You can't get both at the same time. We're back up. Okay. How about now? Yeah. I love John. John gave me my start. I've been watching John for years, and uh, my, my video style is like his. Cops, my, my favorite show. When I shoot, I try to shoot without a tripod. I shoot like he shoots. I follow him. I feel like shooting. John, I love you. Thanks. Thank you.